Hi guys, me again. Uh, just want to make a quick video and this topic is gonna be something that I saw done quite often in HEMA circles um, and I think of myself um, I think of myself as a reviewer of HEMA gear even though you know it's it's more of a hobby than anything else and I have gotten some stuff for free but it doesn't really amount to that much so I got a sword for free I got some um, discounts on certain gear uh, which I'm very grateful for and I'm open about it I try it not to actually affect either how I deal with the dealers uh, and the makers of equipment or my review itself but it goes beyond that it also goes about dealing with the dealers themselves how I deal with deadlines and everything um, and this is something I would like to talk about because I have um, almost first-hand experience with what they have to go through so typically I am very very patient with the dealers and here are the reasons why um, before I start I especially saw this from American fencers they are I um, I would avoid saying entitled but they definitely want things when um, the deal has been made so if they say deadline is by then they really want to have it done by that time which is fair I absolutely agree that should be one thing that you know we get to but we are not there yet <clears throat> so I have a very concrete example and I talked to the guy to the owner uh, comfort fencing and as you might know they have had several problems with actually delivering they made good stuff and they couldn't deliver um, so I knew something was going on in the background because you do not make a business in HEMA to try to gouge people it simply it doesn't pay off They're, the market is too small um, and you know we're all sword fighters but I talked to him and yes there were problems in the background he didn't deliver not because he didn't want to but because there were so many problems and um, I don't know the whole picture but in my experience it's there is a part where the actual manufacturer is at fault and there is a part over which they had no control or no control that just a second my bunny is being obnoxious aren't you bunny all right so uh, they have no control uh, over the things that actually went wrong um, for example for the gloves I know that he lost his aluminum supplier actually uh, he didn't lose him he had to ditch him because uh, the supplier started giving out subpar aluminum if I remember correctly and he had the worst experience trying to get a new supplier so that took a shitload of time and that is why so many gloves were late again as far as I know um, probably there were other problems in the background but this I believe was the main one the second one is the Dobringer, the Dobringer feathers I had one I got it for free and I absolutely loved it um, it was a bit too soft but the new batch supposedly remedied that and suddenly the swords start uh, to be late uh, the deadlines aren't met so I figured again something has to be going on and the thing is I helped a local swordsmith actually get his business up and start making swords so I had some sort of an idea what might have happened so here is my personal uh, basically story so first off um, the guy that I worked with is uh, Miran Krsticic he's situated in Slovenia he makes right now he makes wonderful swords I'll have to get one to review um, and the thing is he was a blacksmith right for most of his life he made stuff from metal and he wanted to make swords so uh, back then I was like young I trained him for a couple of years maybe and it was like yes we're gonna have a Slovenian swordsmith this is gonna be awesome it's gonna be easy problem was guy didn't speak much of English and all of the sources on making swords are in English so I had to do a, a ton of research so fine I do the research we get the steel we start making so actually he starts making swords I was just kind of um, the database guy so I told him okay so you have to heat treat this still like this and this so he tried it out and everything but the problem is to heat treat still you need a lot of upfront money because you need a heat treat oven and he didn't have that kind of money so he sent the swords out to a heat treat house the first sword absolutely crap the second sword 
a little bit better, but it still broke uh, very soon. Third sword, again, broke after like two or three trainings. Uh, the fourth sword was good. So the fourth sword I could use, it was my first sword by him, and I used it for a long time. Uh, now, I didn't pay full price for these swords, but I did pay them, and I knew, because I was also warned, that they might break. However, these were dozens of hours of work put into making these swords, so I thought it fair, okay, the guy's at least gonna get some sort of payment, right? It wasn't much, actually. It was extremely, extremely low back then, but it was at least, it at least covered the expenses of making the sword. So we get there, he starts his own business, and um, the um, orders start coming in, and he starts making swords. Everything's fine. But then um, shit starts happening, right? And you would not believe how much shit can happen. First off, he got a bad batch of steel, so there was a... Um, mistake in the steel, so most of the swords from that batch broke and he had to replace them. And this means hundreds of hours of work just simply evaporated. They went poof because the steel was faulty and it was no fault of his. Uh, and the problem is because we were so new to this, we didn't actually think, shit, we have to make our swords more expensive because this will happen. Uh, so that was the first big downfall. So fine. We start doing that, then all of a sudden the steel supplier says, okay, we are not selling you uh, only one plate of this steel anymore, you have to buy four, which means four times as much uh, upfront money. Uh, and this might not sound a lot to you, but let's say the average paycheck in Slovenia is about a thousand euros, maybe, well, let's say a thousand euros. So one plate costs 500 euros. Uh, and to give half of your paycheck upfront is it's not no small feat, right? And suddenly he would have to give two whole paychecks just to get new steel. So he had to find a new steel supplier, which took a shitload of time. So we find a new steel supplier, okay, we start making swords, and then the heat treating house says, I'm sorry, but this doesn't pay for us. Um, there's too much power being used, and we do cover the expenses, but we make no money out of it when we could be making money. So again, kind of fear from them, at least they told us exactly what and why, but we're boned. Um, but we go, okay, fine, I do the research on how to make a heat treating oven. The guy makes a heat treating oven. Um, and this took, like, I think two months, the whole process. You make a heat treating oven, uh, we already knew how to, basically the theory of heat treating uh, steel, but <clears throat> you still have to actually do it in practice, right? So. He did it, he practiced on a few, and finally we get that down. Then we figure out, shit, we also need a tempering oven. So he makes a tempering oven, and now we're three months late. No swords came out. Work was being done all the bloody time, but it, it, it literally seemed like he was just, you know, slacking off and lying down somewhere. Um, and at this point, I was the PR at the time, right? So I, I handled the orders and everything, and at this point, I started going, shit, people won't believe this. They won't believe that so many things can go wrong at once. Um, so I still tried being as open as I could about it, but it is so soul crushing when you have that happen to you. And I just, sometimes I literally could not bring myself to answer to people that were asking me where their swords are because I felt so fucking shitty. So we get that down, uh, we start putting the swords out and Miran gets sick. Uh, I'm, I'm almost sure that this was like um, because of the whole stress of the thing. So he gets sick, um, he needs two weeks to recover to be actually able to work again. He starts working again, works for about two weeks, the heat element dies in the heat treating oven. Um, and that was, thankfully, that was the, the last thing that actually went wrong, right? But it set us back about, I think half a year, thereabouts, no actual swordsmithing work was being done. And most of it was not his fault or my fault, since I was uh, the PR, however. But it, it just felt so soul-crushingly depressing at the time. Um, and when I think about it, I'm, I'm still just, oh man, how, how could all of that have gone wrong in such a short time span? Um, now, only now, and this was like maybe three, four years ago, if not even more, and only now has he actually begun to recover his business so that he can work 
normally, and he had to work long, long hours to make that happen. The, de the dedication was insane. Um, so back to comfort fencing, I um, was thinking about it because uh, I was promised another sword, and I was like, okay, dude, I, I get it. You are having problems, right? And he goes, yeah, we're having problems, but it was so hard to get him to, to admit uh, or to talk to me about the problem. So I started, okay, I worked with a swordsmith and he had these, 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 and these problems. And suddenly the guy kind of opens up and it turns out, yeah, he also had very similar problems um, on, in a very short time period, a lot of things went wrong, including uh, steel being shitty, including heat treatment being shitty, which are apparently the two things that will go wrong for any sword maker. Um, so, my point here is, you should be kind of patient with uh, Hema makers, because they are not big businesses yet. Um, so, if they are late, you have the right to be angry, but you also have a choice. You can be a little bit supportive, take off some of the stress, until we actually have good businesses. And we do have some. For example, um, Spis is absolutely amazing. Uh, they have been around the longest. I, at least I think they've been around the longest. Uh, and they have so much experience that they cleaned their game up. So their customer service is absolutely mind-blowingly amazing. One of the best in businesses, like in, in general. Uh, as far as I know, they stick to their deadlines. But it took them a while, you know, to build everything up. And when they started building it up, the HEMA community was smaller. So now it's bigger. So when a newcomer comes, uh, it's even more difficult to make things happen the way they want them to happen. Um, and yeah, again, you can be angry if your jacket is late. And you, you can go, okay, what's happening here? Uh, cut the bullshit, just send me the jacket or give me my money back. Uh, or you can try being patient. And there are a lot of faults on the manufacturer side. For example, um, if they tell you, oh, we send the package, and the next week they tell you, oh, actually, we just sent the package now. That's bad business practice as far as I'm concerned. Um, personally, I would much prefer to say, um, well, shit happened, we can deliver right now, we're trying. But at the same time, you have to realize how difficult that is when shit starts hitting the fan. Um, again, if you haven't had first-hand um, experience in this, you might not be able to quite empathize with it, and that's fine. Uh, and again, I'm so patient because I think that HEMA is such a young activity that even our manufacturers need uh, sort of, let's say, moral support in what they're doing. Um, yeah, so basically that was the whole of my point. Um, when you have a choice of being a demanding customer or being a very lenient customer, try to be at least somewhere in between until we get serious businesses or more serious businesses. By serious businesses, I mean uh, businesses that have been around for a while and that know how things work and um, the gears run smoothly because it it can take years to recover from mistakes or misfortunes that happened like out of your control. So that's it. Uh, I would appreciate a debate on this topic because I have had some pretty bad experience with sword makers. I waited for a sword for over a year, actually. Um, it happened a while ago, uh, but yeah, that, that kind of made me a little bit angry. That was, that was a bit shitty, but um, I want to hear your experience and I want to hear your thoughts on the topic because it's definitely not black and white, right? Uh, you can definitely say, okay, they were late and I have a right to be angry. And yeah, you're right. And I agree, you do have a right to be angry, but right now it might not be the best for you or for the community at large. Um, thanks for listening. Again, tell me your thoughts and see you next time.